Hey you mob, welcome back to The Real Life. Um, Jack's here for all of you that don't know, but I'm sitting next to the most talented, wonderful, caring, <laughs> kind person ever. Uh, Shari yeah. Sevens, how are you? I'm oh, good, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank I'm you for having me. I'm just so excited to sit with you. Forever I've wanted to sit next to you and just yarn oh. about you and learn more about you and um, you've got such a lovely soul. And, <laughs> but also Shari is doing some amazing things um, out there in this world. So if you don't know who Shari is by now, then you're definitely going to know after this episode. <laughs> so um, we've had our cuppa, so don't, we're not even going to go with... Um, what was in your cuppa this morning. We've already had it, we've already had a yarn. Yep. So now we're gonna share that yarn with you, Mob. Um, so can you tell the mob at home where you're from? I can, uh, I am from, I'm born and raised on Larrakia country in Darwin. Um, I'm up at Bardi and Jabba Jabba, which is from in and around Broome area. So One Arm Point, Beagle Bay, Jardigan. Um, yeah, so very, very fortunate to grow up in some, come hail from, you know, two of the loveliest, most beautiful places in Australia. Yes. And now I've been living on Gadigal country for 13 years. Yes, yeah. but you grew up in Darwin. Yeah. On Larrakia country. So yeah. tell them at home what Darwin's like. Darwin is hot. <laughs> <laughs> Darwin is, it's lovely. It's, um, you know, it's very, I guess it's that kind of thing. It's funny, isn't it? Like when you're a little kid, you spend your whole life wanting to get away from where you, you know, your home. Like, I'm destined for bigger and better things. <laughs> and now I'm like, I just want to go home. Yes. It's got everything. It's got oh. family. And uh, it's very predictable weather-wise. Like 13 years in Sydney and I still don't know how to dress for a day. Like <laughs> Darwin is like, it's hot and wet or hot and dry. And that's it. Yes. You've got two modes and you're always wearing thongs usually. Like, oh my gosh. Um, I love that. I love that predictability. Um, it's, it's a gorgeous, you know, six months of the year, it's the most beautiful lush green country ever. Um, big thunderstorms and rolling, rolling clouds coming in for hours and days. Um, amazing fishing. It's mm. just beautiful. It's a really, uh, if, you can, if you haven't been to Darwin, definitely get up there. Um, try and head up around sort of July, Darwin Festival. Yes. And tourism and tea plug. Yes, <laughs> you're welcome. No, um, but the food too. Oh my God, the food. Oh yeah, so of course, it's like, you know, everyone calls it kind of gateway to Asia. Best food, just oh. the best. Like we just grow up. You know, there's like, oh, I saw um, last year they started uh, the best laksa, like oh a laksa competition. There's also like a blachang cookup competition, oh. like families and all the black families got their own recipes. And, oh yes, don't you know, even. I know. So it's it's a whole thing. Same with my family. <laughs> yeah, I don't even try. Oh no, same. Because I'll just. Get... I've got real like colonized palate too. Like I was like, thanks, Dad. I got that real white fella palate. I'll get him and sniff that blachang and be like. Mm, that smells like it tastes amazing, but I can't eat it. It's too hot. Too hot. Well, they put like 20 chilies in. Oh, Wait. one's enough. No. <laughs> That's the best ever. So what was it like growing up in your household? Like what, what was like just, what was the best times you remember from growing up in your oh, household? Um, so much of it. I was, I'm one of six. Wow. Um, yeah, yep. So big, big family. But, you know, the four older siblings are quite a bit older mm -hmm. uh, so then they had nieces and they had their kids when I was quite young so I was you know I was an auntie from like minus two same Bless, as most black yeah. fellas um, but just uh, my family was a big sporting family so you know it was always like every rugby team my sisters were two of the uh, so my two big brothers played rugby union my sisters got older and went why can't we play rugby union and they yeah. were kind of really instrumental in starting up women's rugby rugby union um, competition and you know like that whole league in, in, in Darwin there so massive massive families big as barbecues all the time oh. you know kids falling asleep under tables on the mat chuck the mattress on the oh floor oh my gosh do we Uncle have the same childhood I know I know I'm like it's my favorite honestly oh. that's the stuff like when you talk to other black fellas you're like yes as soon as real. uncle brings out that guitar and someone's playing Archie Roach and you know oh. that kid falling asleep under the table. That was me. And yes. I used to get like um, stains on my like <laughs> legs and that from like crawling around yeah, under yeah, the yeah, tables. Proper. But then get, would get flogged for that. But never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um. beautiful. And then driving, you know, spending time between Darwin and Broome, like just so blessed oh. i had a magical childhood beautiful yeah. and is that in those gatherings is that where like i know when i was younger 
I'd always make them aunties and uncles watch me like do a performance with my cousins. Is that yeah, where you well, started doing your... I think this is funny because I think a lot of my um, desire to perform came from being like one of the quietest, like competing. Like, yes. I, and I'm real, like, I'm not a competitive person. So yeah. I'm just like, I oh, let them mob go then. Like, I'm the quietest in my family. Wow. And so when people hear that, they're like, what, you? I'm like, yeah, because I kind of step back and let everybody else take over. And so my siblings were all like, when you win your awards, you want to thank me because you got it from me. <laughs> Don't. How long is that list going to be then? Wait, I had to, I thanked them all in my, um, when I won a Logie. Oh, <laughs> I thanked them all real. in that and everybody was cracking up laughing. They're like, did you just name all your siblings? It's like, yeah, I did. Otherwise, I was going to get biggest arguments at exactly. home if I missed someone. And they were rolling yeah. that music how yeah, they go. Yeah. And that microphone going down. <laughs> Like, hang on. I'm not finished. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get a hiding. <laughs> exactly. No, so it's, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely my mum says I was a little performer. Um, I don't really remember it. I mm. remember everybody else being bigger and louder. Um, but pr around 11, 12 is when I started kind of going to, um, you know, youth arts, youth theatre and things yeah. like that. And Yeah. What was that like? It was deadly. That, that's where I felt like I was like, Allowed to be myself, like I was such a little nerd. Yeah, the I was same such growing up, I think. It's so weird. <laughs> I it was the same. I went to a youth Dude. dance place, and that's oh, when yeah. I first thought, yeah. did, like, no one judged you for who you were. Yes. You just got to be yourself. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh I my know. gosh. Otherwise, you were kind of because you know I had this kind of funny existence where I could go to my family home with mum and you know my little brother and nieces and nephews and all the older siblings, cousins running your mark, everyone. And then my, on my dad's side, my gutter side, my grandmother lived by herself and always had a spare, you know, I, I always had a room there. So that's where I'd escape to yep. and like watch the X-Files on reruns a million times over and like devour every book I could find. Wow. And like, so I had this really kind of blessed existence where I could tap into both sides of my, yeah. my nerdy personality and my, you know, big black family pe like side. Yeah. Yeah. So and then that there was where you fell in love with acting. And those youth theater. Yeah, yeah, youth theatre, yeah, yeah, yep. totally, yeah. My, I think it all stems back to everybody kind of, you know, when you're at drama school, they sort of force you to think about the moment. Do you think that, you know, you got the bug or whatever? And I think for me, it was definitely when I was eight years old, Brand New Day came to Darwin. Wow. I know, and now they're doing their 25th anniversary I tour. I know. Amazing, another plug. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that'll be back in Sydney yes. <laughs> uh, next month, I think. Um, and so my uncle, by you know, for respect ways, my my mum grew up with Uncle Jimmy Chai, oh. and then all my like every person on stage could be traced back to some family link, and so then Gary Lang, who's an incredible dancer, everybody knows Gary, my big cousin, he took me backstage, and we met all the cast, and Whoa. I just remember being amongst this like, like I have this like memory, and it's from my eye level, right? So it's just everyone's like legs going past me like like these <laughs> colors and you know fabrics wow. and te textures and lights and everything like just everyone rushing around mad and I met only Justine Saunders the same night wow. actually yeah so that's I think that's the moment where I go it must have come from that yeah it was too big an occasion to not have an impact I think that's huge yeah that's huge and so what made you go okay I want to go to acting school like what made you want to oh. go and pursue that yeah um I kind of it's so like weird because when you're a you know young black kid in Darwin and you say to your mom I want to be an actor oh yeah she was totally she's like okay great what do we do oh. and whereas I met so many people when I went so I was uh 13 years old I'd been doing youth theater with corrugated iron for two years and my mum and dad yelled out to me, they were like, quick, quick, Shari, quick, come here, look. And um, there was a TV show on Channel 7's Drama School, and it was like their reality show what? set in NIDA. What? Yeah, so that's the only way. It was by pure chance that I found out about this, um, you know, university for acting. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, oh, I don't have to do math. I don't have to worry about this, all this boring stuff at high school. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm right. I'm going to be an actor. That's life experience. Life is my school. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, so then, it, like I was 13 and that's when we kind of went, everybody, me, my mum and my dad were like, okay, that's a real place that you can go to. And 
you know, surely once you're there, it becomes, the path becomes a little bit clearer or I don't know. So I, I knew though from 13, I was like, nighter, nighter, nighter. That was the only thing I had in my head for like five, six years until I actually, until I actually auditioned. Yeah. And did you go, did you go straight to nighter or did you, did you go to Whoppa? Not yet. Well, I actually, I went backwards. I went from Darwin to Nulumboy and I lived in Nulumboy for three years. So I, I thought like I was moving to bigger, more populated areas, but nothing. <laughs> I went to like town of 2000 yes um hung out there for about three and a half years which is where i met you know jonathan oh, the black prince birdie boy lesk himself yeah <laughs> um and our families have known each other for a long time but that's where he and i sort of became friends and then and then yeah i went to perth so i was kind of doing all these weird stepping around getting to sydney but um i did the aboriginal theater course at whopper which is to this day one of the best and most vital uh, theatre courses for Indigenous people yeah, right. in the country. Yeah, It's nine months, it's like in and out, you don't even notice you're there. It's, yeah. I just, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, That's amazing. And that's what prepared me for three years of drama school. Mm. And what was, so you went to Perth, yeah. Whopper, and then you had to just, yeah. other side of the yeah. country, yeah. to Sydney. I, know. I mean, tell me about that oh. culture shock. I was like, I was, thing I was munching <laughs> I was like I had no idea what to expect I remember seeing the first bus number that went up to like 396 or something yeah. and I was like we got number 12 that's our <laughs> highest bus number in Darwin <laughs> we go from bus route number two to 12 that's it there's 396 buses in it like oh, I freaked man. out and was like no 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 this you know like calm down yeah yeah it yeah it just it, it took me about five years I think to it wasn't, yeah, till five years in, I was back in Darwin and I remember being like, oh, I think I miss Sydney. But it, that took a long, long time five just years. because community and, yep. you know, the first three years were spent studying, which is always weird. And then I'd come out and I, you know, just had to kind of then redefine my life and myself outside of tertiary education um, and, and, you know, trying to find my way as an actor and things like that. So that, yeah, it, it took a long time to settle in. And it's still not always my favourite place. Yeah. Um, but that's because, you know, nothing, nowhere is like Darwin or Broome or, or home. Home Boy. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Um, yeah. And what was the day-to-day -day nighter like, like being in a tertiary institution, being black fella? Yeah. Um, it's not an Indigenous institution, so, like, what was no. it like? It was, um, uh, to be honest, it was really, you know, it's taken, actually, this is quite funny, uh, it's taken probably, you know, I graduated 10 years ago, 11 years ago, and I look back and go, wow, a lot of things were really poorly handled. Yeah. A lot of things were really quite, you know, we had a lot of, we had a, a, a head of acting who would say quite casually racist things all the time. Um, and thankfully, I, you know, I, I was always told, pick your battles. So yeah. if something bothered me, like, it's like, okay, I'd let it slide, but that's because I knew I had to save it up for mm. that bigger thing down the track. But also while I was there, I was really blessed. Um, I was in in my year, and then above me were in the year above me were Miranda Tapsell and Travis Cardona. Wow! And then the year below me was Guy Simon and Maine Wyatt. And then running alongside us in the uh, movement studies course was Ben Gratz. So at one stage there were six. There, for one year of my two, three years there, there were six Aboriginal people. Yeah. And we were just loving ourselves sick. We felt yeah. like we were in the joint. Like, yeah. And I know that not a lot of other students of colour have had that feeling since. And, yep. and a lot of other First Nations students have had that support since. Um, so, yeah, it was, but it was full on. It's, it's tough. It's, you know, it's um, eight hour days in school. Yeah. But then it's the hours of homework after where you're learning your lines and practicing your vocal warm ups and, you know, all like your choreography, and, like all this stuff. All so, the things. Yeah, yeah, Meh. yeah. It, so it's probably, I think they said it's like the kind of, the practical hours you put in every week. Somebody said it was probably roughly like 50 to 60 a week or something. Oh. And so, you know, it leaves you no time for jobs. It leaves you, yeah. It was a slog, but I loved it. I you really responded it. to it and yeah. You got through it and then yeah. you've ever since you've just been doing this. <laughs> yeah. This trajectory just keeps going up and up and up, which is just like <laughs> inspiring. But before you mentioned like Guy Simon Main White, Miranda Tapsell, are there people in this industry, black fellows or not, that yep. you just are so inspired by? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think the great thing about being a black fella in the industry is I often talk about like 
your role models can be, they don't always, I mean, I'm a big believer in knowing where you come from to know where you're going. And I think that's an intrinsic thing to Aboriginal culture. Yeah. Because we do, our parents raise us to know our history and our ancestry and our, you know, culture is history. Um, and then that applies, I think, to anything that we do as blackfellas then. But also, it's really cool to be able to look beside you and have role models. It's yes. not like, it's not always people that are unattainable or, you know, miles ahead or it can be your peers and the person beside you can inspire you and motivate you just as much as the person that you, you know, you think, I want that life or I want that, that, that kind of thing that they're doing. Um, yeah, so definitely all the black fellas in my life, um, you know, people like Taika Waititi, Rachel House, um, Chelsea Winstanley, Beck Cole, Erica Glynn, like there's all these, there's a lot of black women as well behind the scenes that inspire me, yes. you know. They keep the engine running and they keep the community pushing for, for bigger and better work. Yeah. Um, Paige Rattray, who's the white woman, she's my favourite white woman in the world. <laughs> my best mate, she inspires me. Um, Nakia Louie. My mum, like the women in, yes. in my family, you know, like the women who have never stopped, who've never had a oh. chance to stop, who just yeah. keep going for the greater good of the, the mob. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's amazing. Mm. And so do you have like a top five ultimate cast members like that you'd like to work with as an act oh, actor? Okay. Like would you just, doesn't matter who they are. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. It would be a Deb Malman any day of the week. Yeah. Any day of the week. <laughs> Number one, because Deb can do anything. She's hilarious. She She's heartbreaking. All of that. Um, I would say Maya Rudolph. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Bill Hader. Who okay. was it? Yeah, I know. This is it's so weird. No, I'm loving this <laughs> list. It's good. Um, Idris Elba. Yeah. Who I did actually get to do a little bit of gammon, like <laughs> non acting, acting, like non-speaking acting in Thor. I was a little, Taika gave me a couple of weeks as a little extra. So um, I know, was, and then <laughs> it was like, oh, Idris Elba, amazing, ticked that <laughs> off the list. Um, and who else, who else, who else? I know there's someone that's just, oh, you know what? It'd have to be like Helen Mirren, like someone like oh. old school, deadly, like, you know? Imagine it. Yeah, imagine, imagine it. <laughs> Let's manifest real quick. Yeah. Okay, it's coming. <laughs> I see it, it's gonna happen. We'll that manifest. would be the <laughs> maddest movie though. <laughs> Imagine what it, what would it be? <laughs> what would it be? A murder mystery, like a who done it, like a comedy who done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There yeah. we go. There we go. It's written yeah, itself. Cool. Done. <laughs> fund it now. One of you. No. <laughs> fund it. <laughs> Chuck it in there. Go fund me. No. Um, but that's uh, an interesting like to work with those sorts of people all the time must just make you want to keep going. Like yeah. You, you, there'd be moments, obviously, because it's an artist's life. It's hard. Yeah. But yeah. being around those people would make you just want to keep going. Totally. And not give up. That's it. Because it's, you know, ultimately, like, everyone I suppose that I'm inspired by are people who strive for uh, just a, um, pushing, like, creative, cr creativity and collaboration, yep. really. And that's, you know, a lot of the time it's why, as an artist, you choose, okay, I might, like, a lot of it comes down to, you know, do I do a little bit of a sellout? Not really a sellout, but, like, do I take that job for money? Or do I take this job for passion and because it it's in line with all the integrity, you know, the, what I've the portfolio I feel like I've built up as a yes. as a creative. Um, so that's definitely a thing, which is why sometimes it's you know a bit tougher to pay the rent that way than the other. Totally. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's true. Yeah, everyone. I think you know that's it. We all should kind of aim to surround ourselves with people who keep us going, keep us moving. Yeah, for mm. sure. And so you think um, that. You recently, so I know that you recently moved from acting to directing. Yeah. Not that you left one go or you just do it all. Yeah. You're doing all the things. <laughs> do you want to see more, you mentioned it before, do you want to see more black fellas behind the camera? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and in like every department, because we have some like shit hot, deadly, deadly directors. We all know them. You yes. Know? There's a lot of amazing black directors out there. But we need like black production designers. We need black head of props department we need black makeup artists yeah we need black you know editors we need black sound design like we need it across all fields even in theater like we need black product you know costume and set designers sound composers lighting designers like there's a whole world of creatives that aboriginal people just 
have never felt welcome to. Like, yeah, right. And you don't know what you don't know. Like, I remember I got to NIDA and I was like, a lighting designer? Someone designs the lights? Like, <laughs> like, because you don't know what you don't no, know. So like, yeah. And so that's when I was like, how the hell? Like, you know, there's so many programs that go out to schools and tell young black kids what they, what they can do. But I'm like, we're missing out on a whole, like, mm -hmm. whole world of industry here that could really inspire and, you know, and employ a hell of a lot of our mob and feed them and nourish their souls creatively, which I think always helps people feel happier. Totally. Um, yeah, so definitely behind, behind, behind the scenes, whether it's stage or screen, yep. we need more for sure. I'd like to see a, a black fella like Tyler Perry situation, you know how oh he's done gosh, the whole yep. like... The whole production house, yep. Precinct, Amazing. we want one. Totally, yes. We want one here. We want one. This is the right. CEO of our new production. <laughs> Look at us now, Is our announcement? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually a launch today. No, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. What you have done is amazing. But you're continuing to inspire other people to do so and um, keep doing what you're doing. But we're going to play a game now. Ooh. Oh, oh Ooh. my game! Yes, oh. <laughs> let's play a game. <laughs> All right, you mob, it's time to play. Is it the real or is it gammon? <laughs> yes. So here you go, my sister. Okay. So is it true or false or yes or no or whatever? Great. So I'm going to ask you some questions and you need to just let the mob know. All right. What's real, what's gammon? All right, the first question is, do you claim to be a Beyonceologist? <laughs> I do claim that. <laughs> what is a Beyonceologist? Well, Beyonceologist. Oh, sorry. My bad. Is something I made up for my Twitter bio. Yes, Twitter. <laughs> um, and um, it's just someone who, like, I just know a lot and I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with Beyonce. Are you? Oh, my God. No, like, neck level. Really? Neck level. People don't know. It's, oh. it's a really, like, it's, um, yeah, it's almost embarrassing. You know how Jonathan goes for Britney? Oh. That's me. Or Mariah. No. That's me for Beyonce. Yes. yes. And him and I, instead of, like, arguing about our divas in our household, we have a mutual respect and understanding about yes. what those divas mean to each other so we would never diss each other. Oh. That's shade. <laughs> That's how serious it is. It's not, yeah, it's real. The, the obsession is real. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, next question, next question. I love Beyonce, by the way, and Mariah, so I couldn't probably be in your household in those conversations. I'd be like with the popcorn watching news fight. Um, okay, the next question is, your first ever TV role mm -hmm. was Redfern Now? Yes. Was it? Yeah, yeah. That was only 2012. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's not even that long ago. True. Thank you for saying that. I'm young. Mate. You are. <laughs> no, it, seriously, in the lifetime of yeah. like a performer, like no, true. Yeah, yeah. Things yeah. are just going so fast I for know. you. Yeah. My yeah. gosh, we all loved that series. I Did know. you love that series? I loved it. It was my first. Yeah, so it was my first t television series. Um, my first film was Sapphire. So I was like, oh. I'd like had the most amazing, amazing, fortunate timing on both accounts. Just we like could have unreal. another show just about you and the Sapphire experience. I <laughs> know. Oh, oh, uh, no. Yeah. I oh, know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> For reals. Okay, next one. Um, you are so obsessed with salty plums <laughs> that you have family send packages to Sydney from Darwin. <laughs> I have family, I have, my best friend, one of my sister girls, Dina Curtis, just sent me a package from Brisbane. What? Because, and I was like, I'm right, sis, I got them. She's like, no, these are new ones, uh -oh. better ones, old what? school ones. Like, they more like the old school 90s, like the hard, deep red. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Salt, you know, a bit of salt grain in that, like, yep, yep. I just, salty plums are probably a North Australian thing. Very North Australian. I, I feel like. Yeah. I know everything you've just said. I've got family that go to Darwin and just stock up. There's this yeah. one shop there that sells wines yeah. there. Yeah, and it's like the salty plum in big shop. bags like this. Yeah. 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 And some it's are seedless. Oh, yep. that's seedless. dangerous. Yeah. You get sweet plum, you can get salty plum. You can the one get... with the toffee around. Yes, oh. the toffee around. Yep. And what I love as well is um, Ben Law, Benjamin Law, okay. the incredible writer. Yes, 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 yes. Um, he is as obsessed. Because it's like there's this really great thing now that happens where all the black fellas from the north on Twitter really sympathise with the Chinese mob because we're like, 
hey, we love the same food. We're like, yes, we're just stealing your mum's foods. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Whole flakes, yes, dried mango, yep, sorry, come check, all dried of it. Dried mango, mm -hmm. oh, stop yeah. it. Oh, Sydney, get your act together so we don't Please. have to keep, keep paying for shipping. Um, okay, next question. Is it the real or gammon that you don't drive? <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that's Jonathan A? <laughs> no, I, I was gonna ring him and be like, give me the dish. It's real, I don't drive. Ever. I don't drive. Have no, never. Have never. Yes. No. Have never. I love that. I rec and it's so look, I can't say this is the reason why, but when I was like ten or twelve, I read a weird like something like from like a bonbon or something and it, and it was a quote or like a day, a, you know, a quote a day thing. It was like the smartest people in the world have chauffeurs. And I think that's somehow <laughs> embedded. I'm like, who did I think I was? I don't even have chauffeur. That's just my man. <laughs> Poor thing. Dime. Shout out to Dale for They're driving me Dale. everywhere. We <laughs> love you, Dale. Chauffeurs for life. That's the Ride bet. or die, literally. <laughs> Actually. Okay, last one. You have trying to do straight face, but I just want to laugh. Okay. <laughs> you recently had a ghost in your house. Can jo Jonathan stop giving you all our <laughs> gossip or what? This is real. Oh my God. Yes. Tell us now. Go okay, on then. For so, all the mob that are dealing with uh, this. Well, because it's true. People, there are mob. It's a real thing that affects this. This epidemic affects many Indigenous Australians mm. daily. Mm. Um, yeah, we had. So we've moved into this place in Camperdown and. Our friend, our bestie, Joseph Cadona, yes. Miss Josie Baker, um, you know, the original um, Miss First Nations. Hey. Um, she, you know, she's in tune to that thing. She's, she'll see them mob pop their head around the corner and say a little hello and things like that. And so one night she was there and she was like, Kadri, this place is haunted. you got spirit here. I was like, what? And so we started calling her Geraldine <laughs> and it was a little bit of a joke. But then we realized like everybody would starting to would, would start to have these little kind of weird occurrences and co you know incidents Yickety. it got really yucky it got like really full on yeah. like quite scary stuff um, so then and there was one stage last year where Jonathan was left entirely on his own in the apartment mm. so he was sleeping in the lounge room and he sent this video one night and it was this like shadow moving in the curtains behind Burned. him i know i was like Mulligan, what is that get it out get this delete this off your phone like no don't why? And also tell me everything. So, you yes. know, like, same way, like, black fellas, like, Taurus. oh my God, but wait, tell me now what happened. <laughs> Story. Same reason you were asking today. Yes. Taurus. <laughs> Number one, Taurus. And anyway, I got this message last week, at, like, two weeks ago, and it was terrifying. It was Jonathan saying, hey, Kaj, um, Sophie and Susie can be a real Darwin story telling everyone's names. Sophie and Susie's <laughs> little, um, their niece, uh, Tanisha, came around. And she said there's something in this house. She felt it it's, and it's not a good energy. It's a male, she said there's two things. There's a female energy and that's harmless, but there's a male energy. And she said the, ob then he, this is all in a text message at my very like work, you know, my white office where I'm sitting there and I'm like reading it, freaking out. Like it said, um, he was like, she said there's a presence, a big, like big, strong masculine energy in, in, the, in your room. And there's an, it's attached to an object in there and he keeps calling her in and she's getting a headache because she's saying no, like she's trying to keep away. And I was like, well, how? How am I meant to go home and have a peaceful night after this? I said, can you ask Kadri what that object was now? <laughs> like, yes. we need answers. And it was this rock that I had bought home a year before. And we've only been in this house ah, for like a year. Okay. And I bought it home from Perth with me because I was in um, the Swan Valley filming The Heights. Yes. And uh, we went to this Aboriginal art gallery. And you know, I just thought, Everything here gonna be safe, like in nothing. a gallery. In a gallery, yeah. And this big, beautiful um, rock, and it looked like it was like malachite or some kind of like deadly green wow. rock formation. Yeah. It was just like calling me, and that should have I should have known, but I thought it was good ways calling me. You know, like just I, it was lovely. I couldn't take my eyes off as I bought it, and I brought it home with me, and it was in our um, kitchen the whole time we've been in that house. Now, the two nights before I got that message from Jonathan, I moved it to my bathroom. Okay. And then Dale, my partner, so when Jonathan sent that message about this thing, Dale wrote back, you better shut up, Johnny. And he sent a text that he had sent to me the night before, describing this terrifying experience he'd oh, had. No. 
and I was like, oh my God, it's that rock. It's I said, so and rock. Because I just moved it in the night before. So then she came back and I said like, don't, you know, don't tell Sissy, don't show. And she came in the room and was like, it's that, it's that rock. So then we had to go, we took that rock and we chucked it in the um, salt water <laughs> in the canal, like not, yeah. you know, the little bay near Glebe. And on the way down to the water, Leah Purcell walked past me and I was holding that rock. <laughs> And she's like, what you mum doing? That is so like, random. She's talk, she went to have, having deadliest big yarn because I haven't seen her for ages. And then she walked off and I said to that rock now, I was like, there now, that's the most strongest, badass female energy you're going to come across in your life. You stay, don't come with me. And then I chucked it in that water. I was like, ta-da. <laughs> so, yes, our house Wait, was can you haunted. make a film about that? <laughs> for real. I know. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. <laughs> well, yeah, I could stay and yarn with you all day. Thank oh, you no, so fun. much Thank for you. hanging with me and yarning. And yeah. I want to encourage Mob out there to sit down, have a cup, have a yarn with Mob, put your phones away and just yarn and share stories because yeah. um, that's how we support each other and that's, you know, really important to us as black followers, especially if you're living off yeah. country. We just want to yarn and Truly. keep each other up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I appreciate you, my sister, and good luck with everything. And, Thank you, sis. Um, yeah, you might, if you want to uh, subscribe to the challenge, it really uh, to the to the channel, please do. It it really supports the channel. Um, but yeah, we'll yarn to you soon on the real life. Yo, ta da! <laughs>